All righty, folks. Let me first say this is the first interview that I am just a wee bit nervous about doing. We have the one and only and great Daniel D. Martino Booth, CEO, Chief Strategist for QI Research and author of a book I read many years ago that you should check out, Fed Up. Danielle, how are you? I am doing great today. There's no reason to be nervous at all. I'm friendly. I promise. I don't bite. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's just I have watched you for so long. Um, I love how you kind of bring your experience from the Dallas Fed to the real world. You try to translate things for the every person. You don't get lost in gobbledygook. Uh, and you just call it how it is. And uh, that's something I've respected uh, for quite a while. So this is a uh, this is kind of a check on my on my list of people to speak with. So thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you for having me. So the first thing I want to talk about is something you put out about a year ago. I think it was around Jackson Hole a year ago. Uh, that a I've heard nobody else talk about. B I don't think the average American really understands why it's a worthy goal. Uh, and why they should be paying attention to. And that is something you said, I'm going to use my words, please correct me if I'm wrong, but Jerome Powell is going to kill or break the Fed put. That is something that he wants to do. So so what is it? Why is it important? Why should we be watching that? So um, the, the Fed put, the Fed put is, is the assumption. It is the operating framework of plural generations plural of investors that the fed's got my back mm -hmm. so if i if i'm naughty if i speculate if i take too much risk um then my losses are going to be at, at, at a minimum my losses are going to be contained if i'm not made whole and it's why we have the explosion of index investing there is no reason to choose stocks there's no reason to choose assets you just need to be long. That's it. And 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 just and not ever pay attention again to fundamentals because they just don't matter. Uh, you know, before Powell had his kind of come to Jesus, which occurred when his staff at in Washington, DC, and some of the other academics in the system convinced him that inflation would be transitory in the sense of months and not years. And uh, academics can be a fairly convincing crew. I worked on the inside for nine years. Um, but once you get past their BS, you realize that they're relying on models that really don't apply to the real world that we actually live in. So when Powell decided that he was going to start that he was going to go back to thinking for himself, which he did when he first started in 2018. And for all the years that preceded that, when he was on the Federal Reserve Board starting in 2012. So when Powell decided he was going to go back to thinking for himself, he said, logically, what's wrong with this picture? Let's take a step back. And I think he determined it's this assumption that it's my job, Jay Powell, as chair of the Fed, to make sure that nobody loses any money in the markets, whether it's housing or commercial real estate or the stock market or the bond market or you name it. Nobody loses any money. And that is what boxed in Fed policy uh, and, and, and made the box increasingly shrink. So it, for a while with Greenspan, it was just methodical well telegraphed. I'm going to tell you what Fed policy is going to be, but I'm still allowed to raise interest rates a little bit, a quarter percentage point at a time. Uh, and then with Bernanke, it became, no, 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 no. We have to have zero interest rates. Mm -hmm. And then when the financial crisis got to be really bad, then the Fed had to start buying up, hoovering up treasuries. And then it kind of segued into, well, you better buy up all the mortgage-backed securities. It created a monster. Mm -hmm. And and Powell's trying to kill that monster. And I applaud him. And most people don't believe that that's where he's coming from for the greater good, because we should, the United States of America, we yeah. should be able to have an economy that can functionally operate with positive interest rates, period. Agreed. End. And yeah. we became one that couldn't. We became highly dysfunctional more like a third world economy. And he also knows on a practical, humane level that the Fed put 
was critical in widening the inequality gap in the United States. So on a human level, he also knows that it's the right thing to do to get rid of this. Yeah, it kind of, again, my words, right? The Fed put was, was a tool or something believed by the 1%. And the 99% was there to, to to suffer or pay for the losses when they just when the risk didn't work out, right? So they won and then we lost. It was it was a yep. horrible trade in. It was and you know how how we're gonna know he's still in the fight, I think, and again, please correct me if, if you disagree, is he's gonna hold rates much longer, hold rates where they are much longer than most people expect. I'm personally guessing he's gonna hold them through 2024, which will be 18 months which will be longer than any other pause we've had. I, I understand that. So it's definitely an outlier and maybe a crazy call. But in order to to break it, he's he's got to stand firm, I would think. Well, yes and no. Okay. He can still stand firm if he threads a needle. And it's been suggested sure. that, that, that it's feasible to do something that's never been done before. And that is to, if need be in 2024, if the peanut butter hits the fan, if things get bad enough, okay. labor market cycle, unemployment rate shock, et cetera, et cetera, take the interest rate down, go for it. Leave the balance sheet runoff alone. Ah, QT, Continue okay. to deplete liquidity from the system. And it is that liquidity that is the lifeblood of speculators. Mm. So if you continue okay. to take away their candy, because okay. they, they cannot have it. True speculators, they want to take risk, as much risk as possible, as much leverage as possible. They need both. They need okay. quantitative easing. They need for the Fed to blow up its balance sheet and keep interest rates at the zero bound. In fact, there was a Blackstone conference. Um, there, there was a, a Blackstone speaker at a big real estate conference um, yesterday uh, who basically said, things are not working. If we don't get interest rates back down to zero, things are not going to work. And the first manifestation we've seen of higher for longer is the breakdown in the commercial mortgage-backed securities market. Yeah. The second manifestation we've seen, and the reason that large investors have exited the single-family rental space and, and started to liquidate entire blocks, thousands of homes, is because after commercial mortgage-backed securities, single-family rental securitization market, that started to shut What's next? Auto asset backed securities. It's all, it's a domino. What's after that? Collateralized loan obligations. The securitization market is, is slowly shutting down because the banks in a higher for longer environment don't have the room on their balance sheet to take on that kind of risk that they did in a zero interest rate environment. And that's why we're seeing the dominoes fall, particularly in the securitization market. The banks can no longer devote the equity or carry the mezzanine tranche that life insurance companies yep. don't have to buy anymore because they can get 6% on their cash. Yeah, Call exactly. Their, their models need 4% or whatever it is. And now they can get six in treasury. So yeah, it's exactly. Awesome. So, okay. So we're going to be watching QT. That's something that I will add to my list to watch to, to see if Powell can keep going after the Fed put, because I think it is a worthy goal. Now let's transition to the every, every, you know, household, right? Where, where they're not economists. They're, they're maybe reading headlines of economic data because it's, you know, it's all they can, they can get to. I think that headlines are going to get worse, scarier, uh, pretty much anywhere you look unemployment, you know, just anywhere you look. How does how does the every household kind of go forward, right? I, recessions are part of the business cycle. We haven't had one for a while. The next one could be a doozy. Um, but what what should the every household be doing? What should they be watching for? You know, what, what should the every household be doing? Every household right now should be figuring out. Uh, they need to make it into a a family professional sport. Replace monopoly. Or Monopoly, as I watch my kids play it on an Xbox. But they need to replace it with, how can we save money? Okay. And it, it it just needs to be done right now. In an environment like this, you have to plan for your spouse to lose his or her job. You just do. That's where we are right now. Um, 
People who are pondering buying a home need to just buckle up and not do it. You do not have 1.2 million apartments come online in the last th in the last three years and have another million units behind it and not say to yourself, wait, supply and demand, because mm. supply and demand, everybody can understand, right? Supply and demand is yep. the easiest law of economics out there. So there is massive demand coming online. They're not going to be able to- Supply coming online. Sorry. Excuse, excuse me, massive supply coming online. In addition to that, we've got more luxury apartment units in the United States, excuse me, luxury hotel rooms being built in the United States. We have home builders who are building single family rental homes, new build. There's just, there's too much rent, supply. Yeah. Build to rent. There's just too much supply. So if you're in the position of, you're like, oh my gosh, my wife just got pregnant with a second kid. We have got to get out of this rental situation. Deal with it. Buy an air mattress, wait. Yeah. Buy bunk and beds, buy bunk beds. Buy bunk beds, exactly. And that's where we are right now. And it's so difficult because we came through a period when Uncle Sam was handing out money. Yeah. Cash, Candy. cash, yeah. cash, yeah. cash, yeah. cash, everywhere. Child tax credit, cash. Stimmy checks, cash. Federal unemployment benefits, cash. Rental eviction moratorium for 19 months. Cash. Effective yeah. cash in your pocket. If you lived in California, it went on and on and on. Yeah. There are still some com there are still some households right now that are being covered under the umbrella of a foreclosure moratorium. Still, mm -hmm. not a lot, but still there are some. Yeah. So um, we're not there. And I don't think we go there until maybe at the earliest March of 2025, because this Republican-led House of Representatives is not going to write stimulus checks. No. Yeah. So again, I want to highlight, because just in case people missed that, she said 2025. So 18 months ish after, after the election, if there's a blue wave, then you could possibly anticipate another stimulus check of the kind that we saw after the pandemic. But a lot of reasonable politicians have learned that that is what ignited inflation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. So again, if, if the, if the advice now is to conserve cash, make it a team sport. I love that. Make it a family discussion. Teach Don't the family what compound interest is. We have just put all four of our kids into cash because, we, hey, mom used to work at the place where they made zero interest rate policy. Now we can make 5%. We're playing a game of let's see what compound interest looks like in yeah. the world. Why not? Why not? Why not? I, I so, so I'm 51. I don't remember a time. It's got to be more than 20 years that we would, that we could get 5%. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, like 2000 and I want to say 2001. Okay. So okay. like the last time we had like a, a 5% CD. Um, I don't know why I did that research, but I did, but it's been a <laughs> mighty, it's been a mighty long time to your point, And we're the same, we're, we're yeah. you know, we're the same generation, you and me. Yeah. So, okay. So this is fun. So, okay. So folks, it's scary. It's going to get scary. There's some things that you could do right now. Conserve cash. Don't take your seed money and go throw it down on a house. If you're in that place, buy bunk beds instead, conserve, conserve, conserve. 2025. That's you know, that's a long time to play this game. Um, but at some point, there's going to be opportunity, right? I think Warren Buffett always says when the tide goes out, see you swimming naked. Absolutely. Uh, is, right. So there's a lot of people swimming naked. I, I personally think, especially in commercial real estate, is is a place that is going to be so much pain. There's It was all financial engineering. It was all this value add, bridge debt, bad assumptions. And now rents are going down, supplies going up. The The amount of LPs, that are going to just lose everything is, is it's, it's going to be wild. And I can't believe to me as an outsider, cause I don't play there. It's like, that's, that's crazy. They committed the same sins in the syndication space that were committed in 06, 07 in residential bad debt, variable debt, bad assumptions. It only goes up. It, it, it's so similar, just, you know, different zeros. Absolutely. That is certainly the case. Um, and, and you've also seen, you know, nobody talks about this, but you've also seen this massive renaissance in Ginny Mae mortgages. People are yeah, like, there's no subprime this time. And I'm like, okay, back in the heyday when non-agency mortgages were 34% of outstanding mortgages, Ginny Mae was 3.9% of the market. Big whoop de doo It's 17% now. Oh, wow. So, and, and what's, What's so frustrating, the reason you asked me about what real people should do, mm -hmm. 
these are the people who are squeezing into homes. It's like, now it's like Zillow. You can get like a 1% down payment through Zillow. That's the wrong thing to do. You're going to get your first property tax bill and go, what? Or yeah. your air conditioning is going to go out and you're going to go, how much do you want for my H for a new HVAC unit? You're and it's upside down. Right the, and, and that's the, the thing. And that, that that's my biggest issue right now is that 17% of mortgages are, are really aimed at drawing people into the housing market when it's the wrong time for them to build their nest egg. I mean, hmm. look, your parents, my parents, our parents' generation joked about it was the best time of our marriage when we lived in that little itty bitty one bedroom apartment. <laughs> I mean, they joke about true, it. They true, joke true. about it, you know. But 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 there's something to be said for you know, family time and cozying up. Yeah, doing it together, right? Making it a family thing. Don't just don't don't just create space and let them go be on their devices in another exactly. room. You don't even know what they're doing. So very exactly. very clear. So it it does sound like uh, again, we're not buying real uh, real estate today. Single family homes. We're we're conserving. So that means it's going to get cheaper. Uh, prices are are going to finally crack. Is, oh, is what I... I I I I don't think people appreciate um, that last September there were no states in the United States that had rising continuing jobless claims. Yeah, there are forty seven <laughs> out of the fifty one. So yeah. the unemployment rate it's it's being suppressed. But every month we get the new jobs data report out. We're hearing an open your ears to this. This is what I want your viewers to open their ears to revisions. Yes. You just got out retail sales. June was revised down. July was revised, 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 revised. So if, if things are going to get as bad as, as we think they are, then, then the, and if the recession's really real, then the stock market's finally going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And if the stock market finally figures it out and it's always the last to do so, okay. then the sixty percent of people who are in homes who don't own their homes outright, mm -hmm. they're going to say, "What happened to my stock market portfolio?" Oh, there's my home equity. Mm. It doesn't matter what your mortgage rate is if you're on yeah. a fixed income, and we know that baby boomers have more equity built up in their homes than any cohort out there. No doubt. But if, when they go to monetize it, and if and when unemployment rises and people are forced out of their homes for economic reasons. You know, this whole undersupply narrative narrative could go away. And that's what we have to be mindful of. It's that there's real wealth that's been built up in residential real estate, real wealth. And if people move to attain that wealth, your average 60 plus student loan borrower, which was not a typo. 60 year old. Wow. 60 year old or, or it, it's only like 4.3 million Americans, but it's still 4.3 million. Americans is $3,600 a month. That's your average, excuse me, excuse me, $3,600 a year. Pardon me, pardon me, $3,600 yeah. yeah. a year. That makes me feel a little better. <laughs> Sorry, it is the 30 to 39 cohort that's $4,700 a year. Oh. Uh, so they're not buying homes either. Oh, no. We saw something really extraordinary in the month of August. And that was that, because you're right, people read the headlines. That's what they see. I've got to pay my student loan back. Yep. It's interest is going to start accruing in September. I'm going to have to make my payment October the 1st. The U.S. Right. government saw a flood, a tidal wave yeah. of people preemptively paying their student loans in the month Six of August. Billion, $6 billion if the article I read. Exactly. That's coming from somewhere. Savings, discretionary, something. So you you stole my punchline. That's uh, coming from somewhere. Yeah. And we have to, and, and, and Kevin O'Leary and this whole employee retention credit. Oh, yeah. Terrible. The IRS oh. commissioners figured it out. We went from 29.8 billion paid out in the month of July to 13.6 paid out in the month of August. Right now, September's running at a $5.9 billion rate. He's decided no more fraud. No more. Yeah. No more money. That money's not being going into the economy either anymore. So these are some big swing factors. If UAW goes on strike, if the government yeah. shuts down. There are, I mean, and it's all, if California, which is 14% of the U.S. economy, all pays their federal income taxes on October the 15th when they're due with a huge delay, yeah. all of these things are happening at the same time. Yeah. So I know you've you've got to go. You've got, you're running short. I'll, I'll give you one more question or, or sure. one more opportunity. Um, where, where do we, where do we go with inflation? Do you think it's been kind of, do you think we've beaten that and we're just going to be on the slow grind? Because again, people will look at CPI headline. Oh my God, it's up two months in a row but core fell. 
is that dragon slayed if they're able to keep it here or do we just is it going to reinflate so we actually put out um, a report today. We we publish daily and weekly, but we put out a report today that shows that um, that that inflation for discretionary goods. Mm-hmm. So these are the things you want. Yeah, um, okay. that is actually coming down pretty hard. Ooh. That does not make your average U.S. household with West Texas Intermediate crude oil price crossing the ninety dollar a barrel line, yeah. which prices at the pump are going up. Just non-discretionary inflation is still up but we've seen the wage cycle turn with the bankruptcy cycle and with the layoff cycle turning that means that you're going to have to make your paycheck cover what you're paying more for at the gas pump and that's why we're seeing prices come down for things you want because you're buying less of them because you simply don't have the money that you and lenders are clamping down they're not handing out credit cards for free anymore. So that that source of, 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 of discretionary spending is also drying up because you've got a, a credit crunch underway. So um, you know, we're seeing it. We really are seeing it. And I think that once we get past this moment in energy prices, and we are in a global recession, we just watched the European Central Bank mm-hmm. hike into a bona fide German recession. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, so once we see energy prices come down, I think we'll have a much clearer vision of the fact that inflation has been slayed. But Jay Powell, to go back to your first question, he wants for inflation to appear to remain high because yeah. he needs as much cover as he can get to continue killing the Fed put. It's killing the Fed put. The one and only Daniel D. Martino, both CEO, chief strategist for QI Research. Do yourself a favor, look her up on YouTube. She's got a lot of stuff. And of course, go get her book on Amazon, Fed Up. Danielle, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much for having me today. Appreciate it.